do my best to try and translate what he has said. In the turn, you get your wheels actually doing that, so that's what's causing bumps there. With the spherical design, they can now mount it underneath. Big Nige coming to say hello. Hello. Do you approve? <laughs> Hello world, welcome back to Accelerate and welcome to One Day Motorsport. Yeah, now we're here with the EP3 today for One Day Motorsport to do their bump steer fix. For those that don't know, do you want to explain briefly what bump steer is? Yeah, problem with bump steer, um, your, your arms, basically, not your arms, the arms <laughs> on the car, the inner arms uh, to the track rods, they are raised because you've obviously lowered the centre of the vehicle, well, lowered the car. So with the arms like this, when you're steering, it actually causes the arms to move. So you get, in the turn, you get your wheels actually doing that, so that's what's causing bump steer, as we tried explaining on the way down in the video. Steering on these cars, I don't think it's the, the steering that's the issue. I think the steering's quite responsive, but the bump steer is shockingly bad. Obviously on track, you don't get these problems, so. No, but the thing is, you do drive this car on the road a I lot. I do, yeah. And it is enough to sort of really put you off, and especially since driving the EG, the EG yes. has got double wristbone suspension, so you really can feel the difference. So we are praying that one day motorsport, they do know what they're doing, we are really are hoping that they can do their thing and sort this thing out. All right, so what Jay's just spent the last hour trying to explain to me is the whole thing with yeah. Bumpsteer. I'm going to do my best to try and translate what he has said. So with a standard EP3, you imagine you've got your steering rack here and your end link. Standards, they are pretty straight. Now, let's use an example. Say you've got 150 mil uh, stroke in your shock. You want to be, say the 150 mil is there today. You want to be within that parameter. Standard is fine. When you start to lower them, you immediately change the angle and you are already sort of in that negative point of your stroke. So every time you're hitting a bump, you're affecting toe, you're affecting the geometry of your wheel and that is what gives it that feel where the car is pulling against you. Bump steer. Bump steer, that's yeah. bump steer in a nutshell. <laughs> now what One Day Motorsport do with their bump steer kit is, I'll explain, they do two different kits, I'll explain that in a minute, but what we're gonna do today is essentially bring it back down to as standard and as level as possible to eliminate the bump steer. Now, Jay's gone one step further and he's given us a quick rundown. So as I was saying there, you've got your sweet spot within the stroke. You need to be in there ideally, but the stock is straight. As we've said, when you lower it, you're immediately pushing out of that range. Now there are rack raises, which I do believe you're having. I'm having done today, yeah. So that will help it immediately. But with the full bump steer kit, we are hoping to bring it back to standard and I really does hope it fix it. But <laughs> the funny thing was on the way down, we were saying, oh, this should really fix it on the road because it feels a bit <laughs> sketchy. But what they've told us is, if you want it that good, they can set it up fantastic. But it is going to be pretty bad on the road. It is going to be bad, yeah. But as we said, I do want it. It's more of a track car, so... Yeah, so as long as it handles well on track, which it will do, they are also doing an alignment. Yeah. So we've basically said to them, we're going to leave all the specs, everything up to them. Now, I do want to state they do offer two kits or two sort of variants of their bump steer kit. We're, today, we're sticking with the basic option or like their kit bolt one, on. bolt-on kit, yeah. which is uh, effectively spherical ends. Um, the rack razor. The rack razor, yeah. things like that, along with their alignment. And the next kit is very, it's a lot more involved and it is sort of a full day thing. I mean, it was amazing when he was explaining it to us, there's a lot of measuring the stroke, um, measuring, getting the wheels off, uh, affecting each stroke, seeing how you want to adjust it that way. Yeah, every single spring adjustment. Every yes, day. yeah. But the reason we're not doing that today is Kenny still wants to take a lot more weight out of the car. There's so much more we want to do. And as you probably know with alignments, if you if you change anything, it will affect the whole alignment. You've got to get it redone. Yeah, and I think I've had it done two or three times as it is. So um, Yeah, race car stuff. Yeah. But we're going to let the guys crack on. We're going to try not get in their way. Yeah, we'll, um, yeah we'll get out here and let them crack on. Right, so Jay has got us this awesome little setup by here now. So we actually got a rack, we got the razors stock and the razor itself. Yeah, because so. I didn't even know what a razor was, not gonna lie. Hey, hey hang on. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so this is the stock one. You've got your steering arm with your standard um, end. 
and basically what happens there is when it goes onto your strut it goes to the top which like as you basically is like that so as you can see the steering arm is up yeah yep <laughs> yeah i'm waiting for an answer but never mind <laughs> yes. just leave me hanging <laughs> so what we're doing today is with the rack razor he obviously brings that point of contact up from the center and rather than going on top it actually goes underneath so as you can see that will be a lot more straight anyway so as soon as you can see, we've got <laughs> Danny's working hard on the back. I think he's finally getting somewhere now. This is why we're glad we bring it to places like this, because apparently it's all seized. So can you explain the, the rack side of it with the spacer? And like I said, I didn't even know what that was. Hopefully you guys learned something as well. But in a nutshell, once again, factory, you've got your track rod ends will mount to the top of the strut, which will, let's just say it's like that. And the... It's, it's like that, actually. Yeah, oh, yeah. sorry. It's, yeah, it's, there we go. it's more like that. Yeah. And with the spherical design, they can now mount it underneath, which brings it more level. And that's what we're saying. Ideally, you want it level. Now, when we come back for the big kit, for the full shebang, they've got, what, what are they called? So I've forgotten already. So uh, yeah, there's something that goes underneath. There's something that goes at the, <laughs> that will give you basically full adjustment of the arm. I didn't mean there's so much that you can do to adjust these arms, it's crazy. So know, it? learning a lot today, you gotta be fair. So the boys are absolutely plowing through now. As you can see, the track rod ends are now on. And JK was just explaining, this is now on full droop. I don't know if you can see the angle properly there. But this is now on full droop, which you're very, very, really going to get to. But as we put the weight back on now, it should go back up to about central, which is exactly, exactly where we want it. So as a visual, that is amazing to see. And you can see all the technical doodah there. So as another visual, we're on full droop now, which is essentially here. And when we add the weights, we are going to be hopefully bang in the middle of it, which is where exactly where you want to be. And as we start getting bump, it's going to go up a little bit and down a little bit, but you're still going to be within that range. I've just had a thought while the car's up in the air. Obviously, we haven't done a video on this, but Kenny has been working very hard behind the scenes. So we've finally got the brake into where we want it to be. We've got the new lines on, but we've got the calipers as well. Big Nige coming to say hello. Hello. Do you approve? Yeah. Yeah, it's a good one. So we've got the brakes on, uh, but more recently, we've got the camber arms just there. <laughs> Some cable ties, like in the cable ties, guys. Um, on the other side as well. So yeah, she's looking good. The boss. The boss man. The next step in the process is one of the most important, wheel alignment. Wheel alignment is essentially the measurement of the angle at which each of your wheels sit. An accurate wheel alignment will ensure all wheels are pointing in the right direction. There are three crucial measurements when it comes to wheel alignment. Camber, which is the measurement of the tire center line relative to the road surface. Caster, which is the angular displacement of the steering axis from the vertical axis of the wheel viewed from the side. And toe, which is the direction the tires are pointed relative to the vehicle center line viewed from above. Adjustments from each of these measurements can have a vast effect on the driving characteristics of your car, so it's essential to get these right. When we say that each stroke of the suspension affects the toe of the Civic, this is a great way to illustrate the point. Just look how much the wheel turns when it makes contact with the floor and the weight goes back onto the shock absorber. And I'm sure you can imagine how much of effect this has when the car is in motion. This is the main disadvantage of the McPherson suspension over double wishbone suspension. Each alignment specification will vary depending on your personal needs or preferences. We are setting the Civic up for track to run slick tires, so JK has implemented the following measurements. With the alignment complete and Big Nige eagerly awaiting our verdict, we hit the road for the test drive. Oh, that was weird. The funny thing is, before we get out on the road, we should say that JK did say on the road now, because we wanted it set up for track, on the road it is going to be a bit sketchy. Which it was to begin with, wasn't it? So, uh... It was very sketchy to begin with. I think it's going to be worse. <laughs> but in all fairness, he did say to me, do you want it for track or do you want it for road? Yeah. And I. I know I was saying again, I'm really bad on the road, but I was like, yeah, let's do track. <laughs> so, That's where we want it to come alive, so hopefully. Yeah. Obviously, we're going to wait for it to warm up before we can throw it around, but I'm curious to see how oh, there's police there as well. different the road oh, yeah, <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah, we'll wait till we get to some um, legal roads and yes. natural speed limit. Yes. jump into the initial sort of drive i just want to say a massive thank you to jk and danny at one day motorsports 
Now, a lot of places we go, we like to film everything, and a lot of people sort of get awkward, get funny with filming. They were so accommodating, they did well, more than what we expected to help us, mainly with the demonstrations to physically show you guys what they were doing. To us, just made it that much more special, so thank you guys so much. So we've been driving this now for a good couple of minutes. Yeah, I'd say probably about half hour or so. Yeah. Just sort of normal driving. We've booted off a few roundabouts and that. And what's your initial feeling? <laughs> now, I know when we first said this morning, on the road, this thing's a nightmare. Um, the reason for the bumps here, the leap, was to try and eliminate a bit of that. However, when I was speaking to JK, as soon as we got there, he said, right, how do you want it? Do you want it done for the road or for track? So I was like, let's do it for track. So driving on the road is still hard work. Yeah, it, it is. Hard hard work. Work. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but you can already feel on certain roundabouts and and um, high speed bends that the car wants to turn, which is really really good. Um, yeah, it's actually helping and assisting with the turn in. I said to you, it's weird now. At a higher speed, going around a corner, when you're turning left, you can actually feel the right wheel sort of pushing you that's a strange sensation it's really there. really weird yeah and we've come a, up a, over a couple of bumps haven't we yeah and we felt yeah. the steering move it does now jk did say that the the, the sort of first kit that we've gone for um the bolt-on kit it will not eliminate the bump steer it just does a lot to to counteract it almost yeah if you want to if you want to get close to eliminating it, you need to go for the full shebang, which we will be doing once Kenny's happy with the uh, the weight and everything like that, and we do all the changes we want. Yeah. But yeah, you did say it's a bit of a handful on the on the road, which it is. It really <laughs> is, especially trying to boot in a straight line on the street. Yes. And I mean, you are fighting, and it's still on the NS2Rs, which, which are not suck. The Honestly, I just put it into a couple of roundabouts, and I had understeer immediately. Yes. Now I'm not used to that with this car because it on the AR ones is for normal different animal. Isn't it? But these brakes as well. Sorry, I fitted a brake stopper and changed the brake fluid. Yeah, and a new few calibers. We haven't put but on video. Brakes so yeah. are phenomenal on this thing. Now yeah. I keep touching them, and there we go. Yeah. I didn't even mean Hurt to. My freaking yeah. neck. <laughs> but so. as you can see, we are unfortunately because of where we are. I've got to say, the weather's actually nice for a change. Oh, it's lovely. But the roads we're on at the moment has been nothing but traffic, so we've had a good feel for how the car feels on normal driving. But we are going to try and get to some better roads where we can throw it about and then give the. See on turning, it actually pushes around. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah, hopefully we're going to get some better roads now and give you a pro some proper feedback. It really, really is. I am absolutely fighting with this. On a track, it's going to be completely different, obviously. But I am trying to keep her on the straight. But the turn in does feel superb. Ah. Jesus! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Oof. Oof. Oh, you're a good driver, but Jesus, that was quite scary. I was quite scared. Oof. I'm not going to lie. Wow. Yes. No. We've said it previously, we've got some good experience with cars with aggressive diffs. But this, <laughs> you've got an aggressive diff match with this steering now. Ooh, it is, I'm not gonna lie, it's quite terrifying on, it, on that road. Gee, it shuffled about so much. The thing is, it's like when, you, when you're on the throttle and you're steering left and it goes right, it's yeah. like, ooh, that's kind of scary. And you you've know? got to stay in it. Like, fair play, you, you have, did stay in it. Yeah, yeah, this is it. Jesus. You have got to try and it literally react to it, basically, yeah. and, and counter do what, sorry, counter react to what it's trying to do yeah so yeah so you have literally got to fight it wow that was <laughs> that was more aggressive than i thought now when i first had this car i used to be able to go up there 10 tenths yeah yeah do you know what i mean but yeah. now it's you, you got to back off you, you, yeah you, you cannot be flat out no we've just done the initial drive now uh now jk did warn us it was going to be a bit how did he put it tough to drive on the road yeah. and he wasn't lying he I, wasn't. I really wasn't expecting it to be that aggressive but we are obviously going to see how it is on track we are going on track very soon so i imagine it will be a different story yeah he's assured me you know that the, it is set up for track it's, not the road he gave me the normal. option and i said just do it for track because it's a track car at the end of the yeah day. all right 
I want a little bit more fun on the road, but it is terrifying. Yes. I'm not gonna lie, but yes. hey ho, it is what it is. I'm sure yeah. it'll be it'll hook up really, really well on track though. <laughs> and check that out behind Just us. Just met uh, someone with a lovely D7 RS4. A new subscriber, I think. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what a car. Yes. What a car. So obviously once again, we want to say a massive thank you to One Day Motorsport for oh, nice for accommodating us and like I said not only letting us film, but getting involved with the filming, giving us the props to explain, sort of giving us all the information sharing, that we can relate to you. Sharing his knowledge, yeah. do you know what I mean? And it was so interesting to, to understand what they were doing. Yeah, because everything, there were a couple of things he said. I, I was like, I have no idea what you're on about. And he took the time to explain everything until I understood it, <laughs> yeah, in, which takes uh, a lot sometimes. I was just going to say, you know, <laughs> that we could relate to. So yeah, yeah, yeah. dumb it down, basically. Yeah. <laughs> it's trying to be nice. But the... I don't know what the next step is. We've done a lot of major stuff now, ready for Landau, which is coming up very soon, by the way. It's coming up very quick. Yeah, but we've got the road trip first. <laughs> oh, yeah. So wow, this is going to be entertaining ah, on the road trip. Oh, my God. Yeah, so, um, yeah, let's just open, <laughs> keep it on the road, and it's still ready there for the, the track days. Yes, we'll keep you updated as we go. We've still got loads of plans. This is by no means finished. But uh, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. Boom, I'm scared. <laughs>